Hello, and welcome to the second devlog of Hermit, my open-world wandering alchemist RPG. I'm going to be focusing on alchemy today, but before I do, I would like to talk about the world as a whole, as it has changed quite a bit since the last video. And this was due a lot to people giving suggestions, but also due to just simple playtests. I put some of my friends and my family into the game and just watched what they did, and they tended to always follow straight lines. This is a phenomenon that has been noticed in a lot of video game development, so I don't know why I thought it was new. But as a result, they would follow along shorelines or along the edges of forests, and they didn't really branch out much and explore much. And I figured this would only get worse once I added roads and rivers. So I decided to instead go with the more universally used height map system so that that way we could see terrain in the distance and that would allow players to see things that they wanted to progress towards on far mountains and things like that and branch out and explore the world a little bit more freely. Now besides that I also went ahead and added a couple new biomes so we have obviously have proper snow now we also have a proper desert and a new conifer biome though I think I'm going to be branching out a little bit and doing something a little bit more wild with the next biome I, I want to go a little bit more fantastical the new biomes are also completely recoded in the way that they populate the biomes so that that way I can put in things like AI and things of that nature a little bit more cleanly the AI currently are only being used by undertow in the plains biome the undertow are a large herd animal that typically hunt in rivers for filter feeding for fish but they are very dangerous if made aggressive though you don't run into too many that are that aggressive and currently the ai is a little bit dumb but i need to work on that beyond that i've also been working on subsystems that are going to be required some of these subsystems were worked on by me some were worked on by my brother who's actually come on and helped me a lot with the project He's worked on the serialization and the optimization, specifically with the terrain. The terrain I had programmed was somewhat less than optimal, and as a result, he was able to optimize my terrain generation code to decrease load times by almost 90%, and then also decrease the hitching when moving around in the world by a very significant amount. Now, beyond that, I also went ahead and implemented a console system. The console system is actually based on this person's github repository i'd highly recommend you to have a go have a look at them but the console that they created was entirely godot script so i ended up rebuilding it entirely in c sharp i'm able to extend various commands i'm able to create new commands all on the fly from any script fairly cleanly beyond that it, the entire internals of the project have been refactored and rebuilt several times over in most cases and the multi-threading system my brother also worked on the multi-threading system really increased performance on the terrain a lot we're going to actually move on to alchemy now so the alchemy as it currently stands is kind of broken up into two distinct phases you have pre-processing and post-processing and then in the center you have the kettle and that's where the actual reactions occur so in pre-processing, you can manipulate things about the elements and manipulate things about the general mixture and composition. And then in post-processing, you can manipulate things about the effects. So you can see we have a mortar and pestle, a kettle, and an alembic here. So the mortar and pestle is where you start. And you first deposit raw ingredients into it with various mushrooms and flowers. And once you have those in there, you can go ahead and begin the processing. And much like in real life, if you've ever processed in a mortar and pestle, as you're going, you pick out things like twigs and sticks and rocks and things you don't want. We've reflected this in the gameplay where you're able to increase or decrease given elements potency in the mixture. Now, this is based off the quality of the mortar and pestle you have, as well as the level of your alchemy skill. Now, in the future, this will probably be somewhat more limited. I'm currently using the mortar and pestle, alembic, and kettle as kind of a baseline for a much higher quality. Whereas when you get beginner equipment, you won't have quite the range of freedom that you have with these, and you'll have to upgrade that equipment. Once you are done with that reaction, once you're pleased with the end result, you can go ahead and pull that dry mixture out, and now you step onto the kettle stage. Now, mind you, there will probably be more pre-processing instruments later on, but for now, it's just the mortar and pestle. So going on to the processing stage, you put the dry mixture into the kettle and are able to process it. Now, the intention is that this will be based off of time and heat. 
So increasing the heat will speed up the process, but also will have certain effects on elements. The idea being that certain elements don't take too well to being heated up too strongly. Once you have processed these, all of the different elements interact with one another. Their various bonds are being activated and either being created, destroyed, or possibly creating new elements. Once you have that, you pull it out and you now have a wet mixture. You put that into the Alembic, and that is how you bottle the mixture. Later on, there will also be more wet mixture-based instruments, things like a fermenting barrel and things of that nature. But for now, we go ahead and put it into the Alembic, and within the Alembic, you're able to control the various effects, and they're leaning towards duration or potency. This is kind of like watering down your mixture to make it last longer, but getting less potency out of it per second. In some instances, this actually will result in a bit more percentage overall, and for things like healing, this might actually be very good, because a long, slow regeneration will actually overall heal you more health than a short, fast burst of health. But for now, we're going to go ahead and select these, and we're going to go ahead and pull out that reaction. Now we have a proper potion that we can intake. Now, every character in the game currently has a effects controller and an attributes controller. Now, some characters don't have all the attributes, but the idea being that the effects can directly affect attributes or can be handled by any one of the subsystems within the characters. So, for example, movement direct slow effects might just hamper movement without actually changing any attribute. Whereas a healing effect is adding health to the health attribute. Everything on the back end is using an attribute system that allows for experience based attributes like skill levels, melee, alchemy, things of that nature, but can also allow for things like health and later on possibly mana, and then also will allow for attributes that are more simplistic like strength and dexterity and things of that nature. All of these attributes can directly be modified and buffed or debuffed or just reduced or added to by various effects and all of them have access to this. This is in every character and that's actually kind of one of the things about the new character model that I've been focusing on is the ability for it to work with these effects and also I have to work with that in the undertow as well and any creatures that come after I have to build into their shaders the ability to handle this. But luckily through shader instance variables I'm actually able to do so relatively cleanly. But that's where alchemy currently is. Now, where I want to take alchemy. So my intention for alchemy is that it is complex but human understandable. And right now it's not human understandable. So the elements all have rules for how they function. But those rules aren't directly visible to the player. And so I'm going to make those rules to a degree visible to the player based off of their interaction with those elements. So when you use an element, you should learn more about those elements. And so I'm going to reflect that based off of your knowledge of the elemental bonds and the elemental effects. So what effects are associated with a given element. So my intention is that when you mouse over an element that you have used plenty, it will show in the dropdown what effects this element results in, that you have seen it result in, and what elements that this thing is compatible or incompatible with that you have seen. And this will allow you to make more informed decisions. So we can put together certain elements that we want that we know will result in a third element that that element is the element we're trying to get or something like that. Now, in tandem with this, I also want to automate out some of the tedium because I know that this system can be very tedious if we force every single potion to always be made through every single step. We have a wide range of tools here and that range of tools is only going to get larger to allow players to directly manipulate elements in the way they want. But what I have done is that the mixture itself retains a memory of every action you have taken and the various options you have selected. This lets us replay those events should you so choose. So the intention is that when you get done with a potion, you go to the Alembic here and pull out that potion. It will say, you have created this potion. These are the effects. Would you like to save this as a recipe? And if you save it as a recipe, you have to give it a name. And now you can go through your recipe book. And if you have the various ingredients required for any given recipe, you can go ahead and throw those together and create create that potion on the fly fairly quickly. It'll just automate the entire process. Now, mind you, this will result in a slightly inferior potion. Depending on your skill level, the quality of the potion will be 10 to 20% less. And if you're very high skill level, it may be no less quality than if you had made it by hand using the default way. 
that's my steps that I intend to take with the Alchemist system. Though I do think I will probably step away from the Alchemist system for the next couple weeks because there are some subsystems I want to work on weather as well as seasons that I would like to go ahead and get in early. And I also just have been working on alchemy for the past month or so and I just figured I'd take a little bit of a break from that. But this is where we're at. If you have any suggestions or anything you like or dislike or anything you would like to see in the game or would just like more information about, let me know in the comments. And I wanted to thank you all for watching all the way through to the end if you are still watching. And I appreciate all of your interest in this project. I'm hoping to do in the future a bit shorter distance between various updates on the project as I don't like the amount of time it took me to get this video out. I would like to have somewhat smaller videos that go over more fine grained details as I make them. That's a stickler for me because I would like to do just everything but then this video would be a giant monolithic hour long video and it would take me weeks to make. And so I'm thinking in the future I'll probably will just go over a single feature like I did with this where I just went over alchemy. But as always, thank you all and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you all back here next week for your regularly scheduled tutorial on Wednesday.